of these natural breaks in the system to create kind of a loop-de-loop. -loop. Okay guys, today I'm going to show you how I do my patented Liam style electric fuel pump install for old classic cars that use a mechanical fuel pump. Now, there are a variety of reasons to do this. One of the main reason I've talked about this in my videos is that with modern gasoline and the way that a lot of these cars are driven, where they're driven infrequently, you end up where the fuel evaporates inside of the carburetor. And then when you go to start it, you end up cracking it for like 20 seconds uh, for it to even get any gasoline up in the carburetor and to start. And this always is really annoying, first of all, but it also is a little bit uh, a little bit kind of socially awkward because everyone's like, oh, what's wrong with your car? Because nobody drives carbureted vehicles anymore. Uh, they're not really familiar with the fact that sometimes you have to work the choke and stuff. With the electric fuel pump install, what's really nice is that you just turn on the key into the into the accessory position and it floods the entire fuel system with gasoline. And then you just turn the key and it'll start usually, provided you have a, a carburetor that's also set up pretty well. Let me show you a picture of what I... I'm going to show you guys a shot of what it is I'm talking about and what the install will look like. So here I am underneath my Dodge B350 Ram van. Now uh, basically what we have here is that there is usually a part in the existing fuel lines. We want to modify as little as possible generally, but usually there's a little break in the metal fuel lines that are uh, supplying the fuel from the tank up to the mechanical fuel pump. Right here, these are the two stock lines and they were stented together. And the reason they did that, I assume, is so that they don't have to make a giant length of steel line, they just join it in the center. Now, sometimes you can take advantage of, uh, of these natural breaks in the system to create kind of a loop-de-loop -loop where you can fit your pump, because generally you can't fit your pump in between those two lines. Uh, so this is the fuel pump I have. It's a Carter unit and it came with this fuel filter attached, which I think is a good idea. Generally the way I mount them, which is very easy and using readily available materials, just to use fuel line, which is acts as a rubber isolator. And you wrap it around, drill some holes and screw it in, and you can mount one of your grounds in here. Uh, and then you need, of course, uh, one wire going up to your relay. We'll go into that more in the electronics section in a bit. But then basically what you do is that the supply line for the tank, you shoot it around and go into the filter and then the uh, output line you shoot it around and go up to where the mechanical fuel pump would be which you can buy simply bypass that with rubber lines up ahead uh, we might go more into that later but that's pr fairly self-explanatory you just use rubber line to stent the two fuel lines where the fuel pump would go and that also is the advantage that the, your gasoline doesn't get heated up by the fuel pump which is right adjacent to the engine so you get less vapor lock that's what a basic uh electric fuel pump Liam style installation looks like. You guys will notice that I used some steel lines that I fabricated to do that. And you have to buy some tools for that. Uh, typically you need at least a tubing bender, like one of these. You can pick them up pretty cheap at Princess Auto. And you need a tube flaring tool. You need a bubble flaring one in order to get a type of line that you can get the, the rubber flex line on easily. Uh, these are quite expensive for some reason and they're really bad. Uh, they tend to break, but maybe I'll put up a picture on, I'll show you guys exactly how I ended up uh, using mine in order to get it to work well enough. But um, the specialized tools that you need for making the metal lines add a bit to the cost. Now you can in some cases probably get away with just using rubber lines, which I have done. Uh, but it's a little bit it's a little bit sketchy because it leaves more area where the rubber line could get entangled or cut or something like that, which it'll cut more easily than the steel line, and then you can get a fuel fire. So if you have the if you have the time and resources, I would recommend using steel lines. But I understand it's not available for everyone. Just be safe. So for today's video, we are going to be working on the 1967 Plymouth Valiant, which does not have a an electric fuel pump yet. It uses a mechanical fuel pump. And it runs very well, but it's a little harder to start than my vehicles that have been converted already. So we'll use that as an example to go through. Now the Valiant has a little complication with its installation, because it doesn't really have a point where I can split the fuel line, where there's rubber line uh, in between the stock metal lines that is convenient to put the fuel pump. There is only the one spot that I found by the uh, in between the tank, 
and the metal lines at the back of the car, but that's very small. That's where the axle is. And I don't really want to put the fuel pump. I generally don't like putting the fuel pump where the axle bay is, because although there's a lot of space, the axle moves around in there and there's brake lines and stuff going around. So it seems a little bit dangerous to me generally. I usually want to put it somewhere where there's less stuff moving. Like for example, in the van, uh, I, it's kind of off to the side, way out of the way of the drive shaft, and way out of the way of stuff. So the Valiant doesn't have a convenient spot to put the electric fuel pump. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to run new fuel lines, which is convenient because it's a smaller car, so it's not the end of the world. Now what I did is I bought a length of 50 feet of 3 8 uh, steel line, and I had some of the tools to flare it already, so that's kind of convenient, although they're not super good tools. They are, uh, they are free because I already have them. And what I did is I ended up uh, going under the car and fabricating these three lines. So I have, I think this one is the the middle line. It kind of, this square here is kind of the, the footwell of the car. And I have a, I think this is the forward one. It's very long. I'm going to cut it to the exact shape that I need, but this end, this goes into the engine bay and that end goes up to the uh, front of the slat six where the fuel input is. And then this one is the back. So basically I cut these to the length that I wanted and then I approximately bent them. They might need a little more bending once we're underneath there. But as you guys can see, I already made my lines, but we need to clean up the lines and get them ready to go underneath the car. As you can see, they have some little burrs on them. Let me see if I can get this to focus. We need to clean up the outside of that and the inside and get them ready to go underneath the car. We also still have to flare them, which is a, a fun experience to say the least. And I'll show you guys how I got my uh, surprisingly expensive but cheaply made flaring tool to work. So for now I'm just going to remove this outer uh, outer bit of metal on my bench grinder. Just smooth this out a bit just by rotating it around. So I'll get to that here. Next up, I'm just going to deburr the inside of this using a carbide deburring bit. So I don't want to go too much detail into my bubble flaring tool. The biggest issue that I had with it was that they tell you to put the uh, fuel line out just a tiny bit so that it matches the die. That's a bad idea because this fuel line very easily slips through the tool. Uh, even though it has those ridges, it doesn't really do much. So what I did is I just stuck it, th stuck it through a lot further out than they recommend, pretty much as far out as the tool can get around. And then you tighten that, it'll start to make the bubble flare. You set this up again with it out that far, and you do it a second time, and that's usually about enough to get a decent bubble flare. So that's basically my tip, yeah. And then also I broke this little end of it by tightening it too much, so you can also just use a quick clamp to hold all of this. But yeah, that's about it. So now that we have the fuel lines ready, let's jack up the car and start working underneath there. We're going to plug the line, the existing line, and then start removing those and install the new ones. All right, I have the wheel well open here. Now, on the brown car, when I installed its fuel pump, its electric fuel pump, uh, the, where, the place I mounted it was on the rear part of the unibody here. I welded in a steel piece of steel that dropped the pump down to what would be the lowest point in the chassis. Now, 
uh, it's a lot tighter here on the A body, the Valiant, than on the B body, so I wasn't super psyched to do that. So I mounted it. I think you can see it actually. Let me see. Oh, there is where I mounted the pump. It's on the inside of the uh, unibody channel there, U channel, uh, under the floor pan. That's, that is pretty much the lowest point in the chassis, so we'll start putting in our fuel lines. I probably won't film everything, but uh, actually, yeah, there's the, the uh, fuel sender there. So I need to hook up my steel lines to that, and then it'll hook up to the pump, and then keep going ahead from there. So I won't film all that just because it's hard to film under here, but I'll show you guys as I go. Okay guys, so I finished up with the plumbing work underneath the car. Uh, I'll probably do a separate video on setting up the electronics to do this, but uh, I'll show you guys as best as I can kind of what I did underneath there. All right, so up there is the fuel sending unit and I have that line bent so it goes through the wheel well. And where are we? And then uh, you can probably see the fuel pump up there. And uh, I got the wiring put in as well. So the line goes uh, from the fuel pump and kind of near the fender. And it goes up through the cross member up to the engine bay basically. You can see there's a joint there because you can't have the line be too long or else you can't really get it in. And the line comes up across the fender onto the alternator there and goes up to my fuel pump. So. It's quite a bit of work to run the entirely new lines, but just in my application, it's going to make it a lot easier, I think, in the end. And here's my wire, so we'll do a separate video on how the electrical setup works. So that'll be it for this video, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe for our next video on how to set up the electrical for this fuel pump setup. All right, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.